Hi guys, Dr. A with Basics of Chemistry. We're going to look at the lipids. So let's start with lipid metabolism. The major lipids are cholesterol, triglycerides, and phospholipids. The cholesterol is the building block of many fat-soluble hormones. So um, all the cortisol, steroid-type hormones, your estrogen, um, testosterone, progesterone, pregnenolone, all of those hormones are built from cholesterol. Cholesterol also stabilizes the cell membranes. Triglycerides are really your storage form of energy. This is what you store in your fat cells. And your phospholipids are um, the building blocks of cell walls and so you have a bilayer of phospholipids in your cell wall. So if you have a lot of phospholipids all over the body, there's also some other roles for phospholipids, but just that's the primary one, the building the cell walls. The regulation of the serum lipids is determined by the synthesis and the metabolism of the lipoproteins, um, especially so the lipoproteins are going to be uh, related to lipid transport and especially cholesterol transport. And hyperlipidemia is a state when there is an elevation of lipids or fats in the blood. Um, and so it could be high cholesterol, high triglycerides, uh, one or the other. Hyperlipidemia is a major risk factor in the development of coronary artery disease. And um, the most common disease-related causes are going to be diabetes and thyroid disorders. So the lab tests for lipids and lipoproteins. So the fasting lipid panel or fasting lipid profile includes the total cholesterol, triglycerides, high density lipoprotein, and low density lipoprotein. Some reports will also include the very low density lipoprotein. A typical sample is collected following a nine to 12 hour fast. So patient must avoid food as well as beverages, with a caloric content such as juices, sodas, or drinks containing alcohol during that fasting period. The total cholesterol, the normal range desirable cholesterol is less than 200 milligrams per deciliter, and then anything above 240 milligrams per deciliter is uh, high, considered high cholesterol, with um, values between 200 and 240 considered uh, like borderline high risk um, not really desirable but also not high uh, lowering the level of cholesterol decreases the risk of death from coronary artery disease um, a fasting specimen is not necessary because total cholesterol is not affected by any single meal uh, the factor that can interfere with accurate assessment, so accurate testing of cholesterol, can include pregnancy, recent weight loss, vigorous exercise, and acute myocardial infarction. So these all can just interfere with the reading of the total cholesterol. Triglycerides, uh, normal range. So a uh, desirable triglyceride level is going to be less than 150 milligrams per deciliter. Borderline high is 150 to 199 milligrams per deciliter. High is going to be 200 to 499 milligrams per deciliter. And very high is above 500 milligrams per deciliter. It is an independent risk factor for coronary artery disease or coronary heart disease. And fasting is absolutely necessary for accurate results because this one is very much affected by uh, food ingestion, especially uh, a meal that contains fats, um, it will fluctuate. So very important for uh, the triglyceride test to be a fasting sample. The low density lipoprotein or LDL, um, the normal range optimal is going to be less than 100 milligrams per deciliter. Near or above optimal is between 100 and 129 milligrams per deciliter. Borderline high is 130 to 159 milligrams per deciliter. High is 160 to 189 milligrams per deciliter. And very high is above 190 milligrams per deciliter. It is also known as the bad cholesterol. Um, it just tends to be higher in uh, patients that have heart issues. But it's um, the lipoprotein that carries cholesterol 
from the liver to the cells of the body. So there's a lot of it that's being taken to the cells of the body uh, if the LDL is elevated. And then we'll look at HDL here in a minute, and it does the opposite. It takes cholesterol from the cells in the body and takes it back to the liver for disposal. So lastly, we're going to look at high-density lipoprotein, or HDL. So the normal range, um, if it's low, it's less than 40 milligrams per DL, and if it's high, it's greater than 60 milligrams per deciliter. So this cholesterol is also known as the good cholesterol because it's the lipoprotein that scavenges cholesterol from the cells from the periphery and takes it to the liver for disposal. And so if there's plenty of it, that means that that process that is doing uh, good, it's um, well managed. And the what you don't want in a high density lipoprotein is a low level. So a low HDL puts a person at higher risk for uh, coronary artery disease. And a high level is uh, something above 60 or 65 milligrams per DL is what uh, is desirable to be protective against coronary artery disease. Um, and generally the ideal LDL to HDL ratio is going to be less than three, 3.0. Um, so anyway, that's a quick rundown of all the lipid tests. Um, again, it's used in the assessment or of cardiovascular uh, risk for coronary artery disease. Um, and it's good to know the numbers, so uh, you know they can be modified with um, diet and lifestyle and sometimes with pharmaceutical interventions. There we go. So that's a wrap for the lipids.